Our presentation, uh, just to introduce it, is part of a wider project, which is Virtual Multimodal Museum. It's uh, funded by European Commission within the framework of the Horizon 2000, which uh, has as uh, overall objectives to analyze and promote the role of virtual museum <coughs> as strategic uh, resource for Europe to broaden and intensify discussion among among cultural heritage stakeholders and to define, develop and promote a sustainable platform engaging a large number of stakeholders in the digital heritage. Uh, we, uh, I'm passing through uh, rather quickly in order to focus in uh, the main part of the presentation, which is a part of the project. And uh, 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 one of the main objectives of the project was also to provide to the Commission and the European uh, uh, institutions and the states, uh, mem state members of, uh, of the Union uh, with a roadmap and recommendations of policies uh, for the implementation and the development of digital applications and digital museums mm -hmm. uh, in what we call multimodal museums, the Museum of the Future is not exactly what we know up to now. It's a combination of various things, uh, and this is what a multimodal museum is. Uh, it's not only collection, it's not only exhibition, it's not only preservation, uh, it's also digital stuff that is integrated in that. There are digital objects, and they're integrated in various modes and presented in various modes. Can be online, can be a combination of inside and online, can be only inside, can be virtual and immersive environments, can be in your mobiles, and all that are what UNESCO already has recognized as digital heritage. And uh, this uh, is the advisory board of uh, our project, which are, are all the uh, important uh, institutions, among which uh, ICOM, Europa Nostra, ICOMOS, uh, and uh, a lot of Interpol in terms of preservation and, uh, and uh, the partners of the project that are uh, coming from various countries, Cyprus, Austria, SPK from uh, Germany, uh, fourth in Greece, uh, seventh regions, uh, uh, the University of Geneva, UPF, uh, we will present here, uh, and uh, the, our technical experts. Within the project, we have also developed, and then I'm passing to the main uh, 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 <coughs> presentation, um, a platform, uh, which is this one. Uh, this platform, please note the uh, internet site, uh, is a community platform for the experts worldwide uh, of the digital and cultural heritage uh, and professionals of various sectors where they can meet, they can post their projects, they can find opportunities, I mean calls for tenders, or propose uh, opportunities, promote themselves uh, as experts in their field, find collaborations, and be informed uh, about uh, what's going on in uh, uh, the digital cultural heritage and in the cultural heritage in the overall. You can also find cases of excellence that we have identified worldwide and uh, you can log in and register uh, using your time or part of your time here. It's very easy. You create your own profile and you can talk and have access and you can post your own papers, your own news, your own projects, your own presentations uh, for the cultural heritage community uh, worldwide. Uh, we uh, also very sorry, we are very sorry for what happened in the, uh, we had a recent post here in the Brazil Museum fire and one of the issues that uh, you will see uh, in the presentation is the importance not only for the promotion but also as an ultimate safeguard uh, of the digitization of the accurate digitization of the museum contents uh, imagine how much we who should would have saved if all the millions of us of objects that have been destroyed were correctly digitized 
in 3D models with all their metadata and uh, we could at least save that for the humanity and the future generations in, in terms of information or even reconstruct them uh, as copies. Uh, it's, uh, it's not only promotion, it's also uh, safeguard and, uh, uh, and uh, the ultimate safeguard. So part of the project was also a comparative research uh, in three countries, in three regions, European regions, and this is what we're presenting today, in Catalonia, Spain, in uh, uh, Greece, in northern Greece, in Thessaloniki, and in Cyprus, of the policies uh, and cases uh, of digital applications and multimodal museums to identify the obstacles, the institutional framework, in the three countries, the policies that uh, are implemented by the stakeholder, the stakeholders identify this, the stakeholders, and at the end identify the obstacles and the advantages uh, that, uh, and exemplify them with some precise case examples. So we have uh, two levels of analysis. One is the macro level, which corresponds to community and economical, political and institutional framework and uh, the micro level in which we choose some representative digital cultural heritage uh, cases. Um, so the overall objectives are uh, reflected in the official plans for local <coughs> development. The, uh, the objective of the commission for that and of our work actually what we was requested to prove is mm, something that it is evident but it is not documented. The importance of the cultural heritage and the museums and the digital applications and their impact in the society uh, in order for them to justify uh, to the European public, to the European and international community, the efforts uh, and the financial efforts and the institutional efforts that should be uh, implemented in order to promote uh, the, uh, the development uh, of the cultural heritage and the research and the access to the public. And also to identify ways uh, through which technological, uh, functional, operational, through which the wider public and the researchers can uh, feel uh, that this uh, precious asset are theirs. Uh, it's part of their identity it's part also of their local development. Huh? So the first of the cases is Spain, Catalonia, and my colleague here, uh, Ricardo Collins, will talk to you about uh, what we discovered here. Uh, the whole uh, presentation and uh, also the final document of the research will be uploaded in the platform. So it's not necessary to take notes, just register in the platform and you will find mm -hmm. everything there, uh, as well as other presentations of other colleagues. Thank you. So, uh, good morning, buenos dias. As Dr. Jo uh, Georgios introduces the subject, I'm going to be uh, focusing on the uh, Catalonia findings uh, part of the research, uh, or uh, research divided, as Dr. Georgios said, on micro and micro analysis. And the macro analysis is basically integrated by laws and strategies that represent the main public policies implemented by tourism culture and scientific technology uh, uh, sectors, which is what uh, we're trying to express through this little image right here. Uh, these uh, three uh, sectors through the uh, implementation of uh, laws and, and strategic plans uh, kind of uh, develop uh, some kind of uh, interesting uh, interaction with, uh, within them that uh, uh, aims to enhance the use of technology in the cultural heritage. In the next image right here, this was another part of our uh, research was to identify the main stakeholders that are part of the uh, public policy in Spain, Catalonia, and we also integrated some of the uh, uh, representatives in Catalonia of the nonprofit organizations. Uh, one of the main entities to, uh, that we focus on is uh, we have you know, right here the State Investment Society for the Management of Innovation in Tourism Technologies. It's a, an 
is one of the main stakeholders that we have to consider in order to talk about uh, technology development in the area of, of tourism, which later we will explain a little more about this combination of culture, tourism, and technology. These are, uh, well, these two tables basically is about uh, the laws that we choose to be analyzed. Uh, the same, we divided the laws to uh, the, the laws analyzed in the same state in Catalonia, and we focus on the, the main uh, uh, topics or uh, sector to investigate, which is technology, culture, and tourism. And we identified the, uh, the motivations, the incentives that the laws provide to the cultural uh, heritage development. So, uh, the next part of the research was to develop the uh, micro uh, level ana analysis. And for this, we, uh, we showed four case studies. These case studies were developed, uh, they have developed innovative technology for cultural heritage identification. This one is uh, the uh, uh, Monasterio San Benet, which is right here in Catalonia. This is a very interesting tourist uh, complex. But the main part of the, of the project is that they have the monast uh, monastery, uh, which was saved by this private uh, entity, this private uh, organization. And they develop a set of holograms and other visual technology that allow visitors to uh, a better understanding of the cultural heritage of the, uh, of the area. Our next is a study is um, the Center for the Gentrification of Rock Art at the Isla La Ermita in, in Bogona, here uh, in Southern Catalonia, and the name of the project is Three Hunters and Todos Cazadores. And this is uh, an interactive game display on a large format, a street that aims to provide users with an entertaining educational experience about rock art history. Uh, this is uh, this was developed in 2008, so uh, in this time, uh, this was a very innovative project, especially in the cultural heritage identification. Then we have this black platform, this is a museum, which is basically focused on promoting uh, museums in Catalonia. Uh, we decided to work with the Museum of Canadian Technology for Museum, uh, and, and well, uh, the platform has a lot of information, a lot of detailed uh, Next one is the uh, immersive installation of the Astrep 3D, which is uh, part of the Archaeological Museum of Catalonia, the Astrep. And I believe they, they're having an exhibition right here with some of the uh, uh, virtual, virtual reality headsets. So I really recommend it to look for it. I'm not quite sure where it is uh, located, but uh, you could get to experience a little bit more about this. Now we, uh, through the analysis of the micro and level uh, research, we identified uh, six obstacles and weaknesses, and then 12 uh, uh, achievements uh, that are made somehow uh, are more positive to, to talk about this, uh, the influence of uh, uh, public policies and in, uh, interaction with different stakeholders. Uh, one of the, uh, the first uh, obstacles that we found is that there's limited provisions in the business plan for operational needs of the digital applications, technology infrastructure, and sufficiently trained and available personnel for uh, the digital applications. Uh, centralization and limited autonomy of the decision making, this is uh, an issue, to put it that way, that is very common in some of the museums in Catalonia. Uh, this is, uh, this matter is is uh, is highlighted on the plan of disuse 2030. This is uh, another of our main uh, documents uh, in this research. So they talk about the need of giving a lot more uh, independency to the to the museums to make their own decision process. Another one is the insufficient understanding and trust between the tourism and cultural applications. Um, I have. I have heard this uh, uh, many times before. And I think that uh, sometimes there is some kind of a conflict within cultural professionals and tourism professionals because uh, somehow, well, in some way, the cultural agents 
They aim to protect the cultural assets. In the other way, the tourism uh, agents, they try to promote and to bring as much as people as possible. So this can be contradictory a lot of the time. But uh, we have a couple of uh, laws, like the law of tourism in Catalonia and the law of Catalan cultural heritage, which both seek to protect, obviously, the cultural heritage. But at the same time, they both mention the need to create, increase the tourist flow, as well as this mention of the law of Catalan cultural heritage. Uh, just to intervene here, you can see on the slides downstairs what we recommend actually in order to uh, overcome this kind of difficulties uh, as new policies actually to the stakeholders. Uh, for lack of an adequate evaluation system to better identify the satisfaction, satisfaction, this is a, a very uh, interesting issue to be solved as soon as possible in order to continue to get a lot of more detailed information better uh, programs or uh, somehow uh, try to uh, reach uh, in a better way to their users. But it's also on the strategic plan of tourism in Catalonia and long since 2030, they talk about this, the need to solve this situation. Yeah, this is the, uh, there's limited information on the impact, yeah, of the uh, economic impact. Uh, which is one of our main recommendations too, because these kind of studies cost a lot and they have integrated from the, from the beginning in any museological project in order to justify and document the money the society spends for that. Uh, what uh, the society earns also from that has to be proven. Although we feel it, we see it, we know it, we, don't, we cannot prove it, it's not documented. Especially when, when uh, introducing new technologies and applications, then uh, it, it could be a bit more uh, challenging, but then it's good to do their further orientation. <clears throat> These are the achievements, actually. Yeah. Uh, so an extensive network of government entities and institutions have been developed. We have an important body of regulations and public support policies. Uh, and there is a network of clusters and institutions dedicated to the research. Uh, you, you can see the, uh, the data on the right. Uh, there is public strategic plans that highlight and promote uh, interdisciplinary, which is the key word, collaboration. There are, tar there are regulations in both sectors that take into account the importance of information of digital technologies. Yeah. yeah. Uh, go back to the hierarchies. Yeah. I think it's, just, it's important to highlight that the strategic plan of tourism in Catalonia 2020, uh, they, uh, they highlight the use of information and communication technology as a priority for the tourism sector. So I think that's, that's a good sign of the tourism sector trying to incorporate a lot more technology development to the cultural heritage, which is what they mentioned heritage and the uh, tourism sector in general. And then <coughs> uh, there is a strong uh, link between the uh, cultural and educational system, uh, especially the primary and the secondary education, as Ricardo said, uh, are uh, intensively linked to the cultural organizations and there is improvement of attractiveness for younger audiences to cultural heritage. Yeah. You uh, can say a lot about that, I hope. Well, <laughs> this, is, so, yeah, yeah. this is uh, uh, another issue that comes when talking with museums. Uh, I think most of the museums that are basically focused on cultural heritage, they struggle to attract, to attract a new audience. So yeah. uh, we believe and uh, we're pretty sure that uh, I 
as we have two more minutes uh, and the time is limited, I'm going through very quickly for the rest. Uh, there is a detonator for new digital projects that are generated from, from the first projects. So they work as a boosting uh, uh, thing, machine, a motor for new projects. There is social and academic recognitions in international conference that's important for the museum operations. Uh, there is public and private operator and enhancement. Uh, same uh, work has been done in the municipality in Thessaloniki, uh, in a new museum uh, that we conclude in the same approximately uh, conclusions uh, and uh, same difficulties. And uh, this is uh, the Museum of and Cultural Center of Thessaloniki that has been studied and is essentially a virtual museum. And in Cyprus, uh, which is a smaller country, a smaller place, a smaller region, uh, there is also set up uh, a, a, a stakeholder identification, uh, the stakeholders, and we identified some micro cases, just like a Sinu church in, in Cyprus that has been digitized, you can see here completely. And uh, in Cyprus, they had a big problem of loss of cultural heritage because of the conflict. Uh, that's a very important uh, step. So um, there is a lack of policymakers awareness. It's identified their lack of national strategy. Uh, UNESCO, although uh, Cyprus, although gained the UNESCO chair and the EU era of chair on digital heritage uh, this year, so uh, it will be one of the centers of excellence. Uh, I'm going uh, on the overall conclusions. Uh, just to finish the presentation uh, that you will find online. So what we recommend, it's part of the roadmap that the Commission is uh, going to receive from VIM, is the standardization of the decision-making process. You can uh, be tomorrow if you want. I'm going to present that at uh, 11.30, uh, which is separated in four stages. You can see that in detail, how you set up a digital project in your museum, in your applications, what you have to think about. The intensification of multidisciplinary training policies for museum professionals, that's a very important thing to promote uh, a common understanding and integration of digital apps in the museums. That means money for, for training for all kinds of staff, from curators to museum operators. The inclusion of resources for middle and long-term long socioeconomic impact studies and evaluation process in development from the beginning of any digital application in the cultural heritage, uh, not only uh, for the uh, implementation itself, but for the evaluation and the operation, the standardization of various technologies and the enhancement of regional and European net networks of users. We hope our uh, platform will help a lot on that and many other local initiatives to interconnect the resources and know-how and experts in the digital heritage all over Europe and make them available to the professional in all over the world. The integration of digital culture in the curricula of the humanities studies. Uh, uh, many of uh, the older archaeologists uh, and many of the new ones, unfortunately in Europe, they do not understand uh, what the digital culture is. and. Uh, how it works, or what the challenges are, what the methodology, what the opportunities are, uh, because they lack of training and information on that. The enhancement of common activities, as uh, Ricardo said before, before, locally among the stakeholders in a regular base, I mean create networks between the professionals of cultural heritage, tourism, education, that are working on a permanent base, not just meeting to make a project but they're trained together, they're developing common understanding and common language. To boost European excellence in the field of digital cultural heritage and uh, integrate massive and standardized digitization. And at the end, the development and integration of technologies supporting the structured public participation, the crowd uh, uh, participation in the management. That does not mean that the crowd is going to make research but they are going to be integrated in the process of somehow under a controlled way uh, to manage and understand uh, what the digital objects that we have in the museums are. 
and they have to be part of it. Uh, they do not belong to only to archaeologists. They belong to all citizens all over uh, the world, the country, and uh, it's a humanity uh, collective uh, resource. So please do not forget to catch the opportunity to register in the Digital Cultural Heritage Community Platform of BIM. And uh, thank you for being here. I hope to see you tomorrow also to the next uh, paper. Thanks a lot. Thank you.